Edmund the Troll Slayer Alberg, an unauthorized biography. Come on, Twig, let's find a cozy place to read. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to Level Pixel Level. And uh, today I just want to take you through my second attempt at rigging a face using the Grease Pencil Objects in Blender. I did my first attempt a couple of months ago and I was using basically panels to hide eye shapes and I wanted to try something a bit more advanced this time with eyebrows, a full eye rig, and a full mouth rig. And right now you can go to my Gumroad account and download this asset if you want to check it out. Uh, this face is from a show called Hilda, which is on Netflix if you want to check it out. And it's a really fun show. It's got a really fun style to it. The 2D animation in it is amazing. The way they just animate on twos and do really smart things with their animation uh, just makes it a really nice show. But let me take you through the rig elements and we'll go piece by piece through and I'll just show you the rigging techniques that I use to build these pieces. So first down here I have this main control and this is root.c.001 and this will move the entire head. I always like to have this on the rig where I can scale, rotate, and move the entire character, and everything is stable. The last thing I want to do is rig up the entire character, but lose the ability to move it around in space. So I also added this node down here under the chin, and it's something I didn't think I was going to add in, but then as I watched more of the animation, I found a lot more of this move where there's a subtle stretch squash to the face as uh, the character talks a lot of the time. So. I used a lattice for that, and I'll turn on the lattice so you can see what's happening. So there's the lattice that's actually adjusting, and it's just moving that lattice around space and just the bottom part. That lattice is connected to the rig, and I'll turn on those bones through those deformed bones there. And to control that, I just have a control bone down here, and this deformed bone right here just has a damp track and a stretch too to it. That's a technique I use a lot when I'm doing a, a deform move like this. So pretty simple deformation on the face control using a lattice modifier. And then if I click on the actual face piece, there's a lattice modifier here. You can only put one lattice modifier on a grease pencil object. If you try to put another one, you'll get an error. So just keep that in mind while you're rigging. Something to note though is that a lattice itself can take a lattice modifier. So if you did want to stack lattices, you'd want to do it at the lattice level, not at the grease pencil level. So let's move along to the, uh, I'll go up to the eyebrow rig actually. So the eyebrow rig is fairly simple. It's pretty much what I did um, for the other eyebrows in my other face rig. It's just a collection of deformed bones that actually push a lattice this time. So that's moving those deformed bones and those deformed bones are actually moving this lattice here. And I'm really enjoying the way lattices work on the grease pencil. I really like the deformation that I'm getting from it. Let me flip to B bone. So I'm using bendy bones, and then these bones have a damp track and a stretch too, with a copy transforms to another set of bones, and I'll turn those on as well. These bones here, and then those bones get parented to my control bones. I tried something a little bit different with the eyebrow rig this time as well. Um, let me just grab it and move it off the face again so we can isolate it. So I have this main controller to move the eyebrow around. Let me just turn off the lattice and the deform bones. I also added this uh, controller up here, which has this really nice fall off and it's allowing me to get these really nice arcs with the lattice without doing too much work. So as an animator, you can get a lot of interesting brow shapes with just that controller and the main controller. So I can bring this over here and I can pull this piece down and get a really interesting brow shape with just one controller. And then if I want to, I can use the tweakers to adjust that shape. I always try to do that when I'm rigging to have one controller maybe do a lot and allow the animator to get most of their shapes from one controller. Uh, this also cleans up the graph editor when you're working as an animator, so it can usually make things a little bit easier. Uh, the other eyebrow is rigged the exact same way. It just has the main controller with the tweakers underneath it. The mouth is almost rigged exactly like the eyebrows. It's just two eyebrows stacked up. And then inside the mouth, I'm actually using the masking effect here. So under grease pencil, there's this masking option, which lets me actually mask pieces of the character. Now on the main face controller here, this moves the entire mouth. 
I have some dials here and I noticed that in the show, the Hilda character is always making this double teeth where the teeth form one shape with no line in the middle. So I added that as a shape. And then I have a top teeth dial and a bottom teeth. Then on top of that, I have little controllers for each of those pieces here to move these teeth. And even the tongue has its own controller. And they're just moving around within the mask of the grease pencil. So if I turn that off, you can see where those grease pencil objects actually are and how they're being manipulated. So I'll move this over here. And I'll turn the uh, masking back on. Okay, the actual mouth controllers. Um, let's talk about those for a minute. I have this controller at the top right here and it's just pulling up these tweaker nodes. This is very similar to the eyebrow setup. Um, it's just using a technique that I've used before. Let me turn on x-ray so you can see it. And it's just moving those bones. Now, I didn't use a lattice on the mouth. I actually rigged the grease pencil pieces right to these bones here to get this stretchy rig here. And then that top controller has a fall off to the tweaker bones using a transformation constraint. So each of these controllers has this transformation constraint here, which is pretty much just like a driver constraint. And then as I go along the controllers, there's a fall off based on how far it is away from that main controller. So again, with just a couple controllers, I can get a lot of really interesting mouth shapes without having to change that much. Again, this is key when you're building things for animators, you wanna give them a couple controls that do a lot of things. Uh, this control here, this big one here, allows me to move the lips while keeping the mouth static. So just some interesting things you can do with that. You can even scale it. And then on the side, I have these side controls, which allow me to get really big smile shapes. Or even if this is collapsed, I can just get a very simple smile shape. I am getting some artifacting if I pull this in different directions. Like there, it's starting to artifact a little bit, and that's something that I'm still experimenting with. Um, if I grab these two controllers, the top and the bottom, I can get a really nice smile. Although if I pull this too far, eventually I'm going to get that issue there where the grease pencil is trying to fill, even though I'm pulling them. Mind you, that's a pretty extreme shape. If, if the character was doing a shape like that, I'd probably just do something specific for that pose. But you can get a lot out of it here, and then you can even still come back in here. And, and I find I can achieve most of the shapes uh, from the show itself. So I have a very simple nose rig, it's just one node that I move the nose. And let's move on to the eye rig. The eye rig is probably the most complex piece in this entire face rig. So I have a couple layers of grease pencil and that allows the top of the eye to go above the hair. I guess the rim of the eye with the background just floating on the face. I have these main controllers down here and if I pull this up, I'm getting that nice straight line right across the eye. And then I just have tons of tweakers here that'll allow you to shape the eye. And it just allows you to further get some interesting shapes on the eye. I'm getting a bit of bleeding right there and that's probably caused by a smooth modifier. Now the thing driving the eye shape is actually a lattice. And let me turn it on right now. So this lattice is driving everything on the eye and the main tweakers here are actually driving a secondary rig and I'll turn that on as well. So I used a secondary rig because sometimes when you use a lattice mixed with the original rig, you're going to get double transformation on the lattice itself and it'll cause the eye to shoot away when I grab the root node and move it around. I can do a full tutorial on that in the future, just really dialing in on how lattices work in Blender and how you can use them in rigging. Something else I'm doing that I've really been experimenting a lot is using a cast modifier. So I'm gonna turn on these um, empty objects here at the top of the rig. So you can see that there's these empty objects and they go on forever, the, the scale on them is huge. What that is, is on the lattice itself, I've added a cast modifier which basically allows you to use the empty object as an, another push object. So as I bring this eyelid down, I'm actually driving that empty down in space. It's just parented to it. 
and it's pushing down on that lattice. It's creating a really nice flat eyelid shape and a really nice in-between on that eyelid shape. And I can do the exact same thing and it's just pulling up a cast from the bottom. Again, that's another thing I can do a full tutorial on where I dive into how lattices and casts can work together in Blender. Um, let me just flip those off and we'll talk about the last piece here. So the actual eye control itself is actually broken up into three where I've added this controller at the top to scale the eye and this controller at the bottom as well. I actually would probably do a couple more things like it'd be nice if you could grab these and then easily scale this circle out. It doesn't have that ability right now. I notice the show does do that a lot and it's something I might want to think about adding in the future. The eye itself is masked onto that eye background the same way the mouth works. So if I just click on the grease pencil object and come to the layers, I've got the eye base, which is the white layer and the eyes themselves. And I've just turned on that mask option, which is extremely handy when it comes to grease pencils. So now it just pretty much floats off the eye. That's pretty much the rig. Um, from here, I'd like to try things like having the character turn almost in 3D space while maintaining the shape of the character and the integrity of the character. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything I've done here. And I'm gonna keep playing around with seeing how far I can go with this. Um, the plan is to build the flexibility of a 3D face rig onto a 2D object and to see how expressive I can really get with the shapes. Anyway, be sure to go to Gumroad and download the asset for yourself, try it out. Uh, I think it'd be really cool if an animator could try this out and let me know what they think so that in the future I can make better rigs with more flexibility in the future. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>